Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Our topic today is why is it easier to believe in the devil than to believe in God? Why is it easier to believe in the devil than in God? It's easier to believe in an enemy than in a patron. We all take note of the suffering which we suffer, but rarely notice the good things that happen to us. This is especially true when things are generally going better than bad. A good thing that happens among days of good things goes unnoticed. One bad thing, though, that crops up among hundreds of good things stands out like a dirty spot on a white sheet. Also, good things do not need correction. We do not have to pay attention to good things that happen. They happen, they're good, they don't cause trouble, and we go on with our life. However, when one bad thing happens, we work so hard to correct it. Some never yield to correction, and we remember all of them. When you put this together with the fact that we assume bad things are not from God, because we assume we ourselves are good, and that God would not do bad things to good people, then with all of this, we have a recipe for confusion. We are not all of us good. Just because some actions are your actions does not make them good. Bad things do come from God, especially as punishment or correction. But we see the bad and remember the bad and associate it with the devil, declaring it comes from some unseen enemy. The Bible describes us all as enemies of God before we are saved out of the whole collection of individuals, often called the world in some bad translations. If you are an enemy of God, then the devil is not your enemy. God is. Let me say that again. If you are an enemy of God, then the devil is not your enemy. God is. So when someone speaks bad of God, talks as if God doesn't exist and you're a fool if you think he does, berates God for all the suffering in the world, or all kinds of accusations, this person is speaking with his own lips that he is an enemy of God. Therefore, the devil is not his enemy. So when you attribute bad things happening to you as an enemy of God, those bad things are most likely coming from God, either to punish you or to correct you, or both. You need to get right with God. You do not want to be an enemy of God. When bad things happen in your life, you don't want those bad things to come from God. Because that, that is not going to turn out well for you. It will not turn out well. And when we get to the end and we stand in front of the Almighty God in that final judgment, as we all will... Christian and non-Christian, Jew and non-Jew, we will all be judged according to our actions, our own actions. All of us will. But our actions will reflect what we believe. That's why faith is so important. Faith is the motivation for making a decision one way or the other. And that decision is the choice of this action or that action, or the same action this way or that way. And so your actions will be judged in order to reveal what you really believed. And if there's a disconnect between what you said you believed and what you did, you're called a hypocrite. And it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or non-Christian. It doesn't matter who you are. Pope Billy Graham doesn't matter. If you're a hypocrite, you're a hypocrite. And those are assigned to the utter darkness forever. We know that. There's a special place for false teachers as well. 
the mist of darkness forever. So you need to be very careful because when you stand before the Almighty God and you have lived your life as an enemy of God, how do you think it's going to turn out for you? You will be thrown where the devil is thrown and all of his associates, all of his companions, all of the angels who followed him. The beasts. Yes, beasts. There were two of them, if you remember. Those are the hunted game animals we saw in a recent video. It's not, the word doesn't mean beast. It means a hunted game animal. He should be scared because a hunter is coming for him. Jesus Christ is coming for him. So when he does, he's going to throw them into the lake of burning sulfur that's prepared for the devil and his angels, for the false prophet and the beasts. And that's where you're going to be thrown to as an enemy of God. Because you're a friend of the devil. You're a friend of the whole collection of individuals, not of God. You must be very careful. When it's easier to believe in the devil than God you got a problem. And it is easy to believe in in an enemy. But we think that the devil is our enemy when we are actually enemies with God. That's the disconnect. That's the problem. Now, if you are truly following God, not like in the apostate churches where they give lip service, but they don't know the power of God at all. There's no power of holiness in their life. There's no godliness, reverence of God. It's gone. Watch how they dress when they go to church. They say they do that for the sake of other people to make them feel more comfortable, but that's not true. That's absolutely not true. Because they don't just dress to make other people more comfortable. They dress in order to show off their lust. And it's various ways. The women may wear so that their cleavage is showing. You can actually see the cleavage in their breasts. They may wear their their shorts so high, you can see their thighs. Or sometimes even part of their buttocks. It's terrible. It's very distracting. But that's not the only kind of lusts that are revealed. How about the guys who wear caps and jerseys of sports teams? You say, Ron, how's that lust? Absolutely, it's lust. Absolutely, it's lust. We as Christians should have no part of that. No part of it. There are many, many, many reasons why we should have no part of organized sports. Now, I'm going to have plenty of people flip out over this. Just like if I were to say that, that we should not be listening to music. Because there, there, there's very, there are very few musicians who are playing music that is godly music. It's so rare. The whole Christian music industry is a farce. They are false teachers also. I'm not just throwing that out. That is a fact. When they write a song and sing a song, they are teaching. It has content. If that content is not true, if it's promulgating heresy, they are false teachers. But even more, remember, the false teachers merchandise you. Do they charge for the music? Every single one of them do. Not only that, it's an enterprise. Its purpose is not to minister. They slap that on to justify it so that you'll come and buy tickets. They're just like the world. There's no difference between, oh, but they pray beforehand. Pray to who? The God of Mammon? It's certainly not the God of Jesus Christ, the Father of of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not. For their greed runneth over. So let's take a look again. Is it easier to believe in the devil than God? We see the bad. We remember the bad. What is wrong with us? Why don't we take note of the good things that happen and magnify those so that we remember those? Until you've done that, you're not truly living the thankful life that we are commanded to live. That even is 
embedded in that passage of Romans 1, where it's talking about those who purposely conceal the knowledge of God. Thankfulness is what they're rejecting as a lifestyle. And let me show you that just briefly. So here we are at the Rooted Word website. And what we have is verse 21 of Romans 1. Let me get my picture in here. There we go. It says, through which the ones knowing God, so they know God, through which the ones knowing God in that manner do not render glory to God, nor are they truly cheerful. But they are chewed up completely in their discussions and the heart, without an assembling of knowledge of these is shaded, and the heart is shaded, darkened. But they are chewed up completely in their discussions, and the heart, without an assembling of knowledge of these, is shaded. The glory and true cheerfulness. That's what it, that's the assembling of knowledge of these I'm just talking about. But in addition to God's qualities. So, thankfulness, cheerfulness are at the core of the Christian experience. And if you are not magnifying the actions of God in your life, in order to be truly cheerful, thereby rendering glory to God, and increasing your cheerfulness in God, you will be chewed up. In every discussion that you have, you will be chewed up more and more, and your heart will become shaded. Your heart will become darkened. The assembling of knowledge of God will fall apart. You must magnify the works of God in your life to the glory of God so that you are truly cheerful. That's how you can believe in God more easily than believing in the devil. But if you don't do that, believing in the devil will eclipse your belief in God. And you'll go around seeing demons behind every bush like Martin Luther. I haven't told this yet. Recent research of mine on Martin Luther uncovered a scandalous thing he used to do, which is unchallenged by the Lutherans. They admit that that's what he did. He used to see the devil attacking him in all kinds of places. And as soon as he did, he would, he would poop. Not joking. He would poop right there, grab the poop in his hand, they didn't have the gloves. Grab the poop in his hand and fling it at the devil. Or what he thought was the devil. Now you don't want to become Mar like Martin Luther, do you? Where he saw the devil everywhere. Attacking him. But he didn't see the grace of God. The cheerfulness of God. The actions of God in his life. And magnify those to the glory of God and have this truly cheerful interior at the core so that his belief in God eclipses his belief in the devil. Not that we're not supposed to believe in the devil, but that is really a minor thing compared to believing in God. It's a consequential thing compared to believing in God. Whether there's a devil or there's not a devil, whether there ever was a devil or there ever wasn't a devil, I mean, there was and there is, but even if there hadn't been, everything would still be the same in regards to our relationship with God. The devil doesn't change that. The devil is an important element. We can't ignore the him. It's a him. It's not general evil, as some Christians like to say. It's not. It's an actual individual. We can't ignore him because we're warned to watch out for him, to stand against his wiles, and that he is out to attack and devour us. 
But do not let the belief in the devil and the observation of bad things that happen in your life be magnified to eclipse the good things that God does for you as a believer, if you're a believer. You must take the time to magnify the actions of God in your life so that the glory goes to God and we are truly cheerful. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart. Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Get on over to our website, The Rooted Word, and start reading the translation and also the articles that we've posted. It's at therootedword.com, therootedword.com. And may the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.